Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at the serverside.com and I very quickly want to show you how to get started with Spring Boot and write your very first Spring Boot RESTful web application. Now I'm starting off with a basic Windows installation here and I don't have too much installed. I installed Gradle because in order to build a Spring Boot application you need either Gradle or Maven installed. I love them both. I've got Gradle here. You also need an installation of the JDK. JDK 17 or newer is required. I've installed Java 21 because I like the blackjack theme you get with that number 21. And of course, you should have an IDE. You can do all your Spring Boot development with Notepad++ if you really want. But Spring provides a free Eclipse-based IDE called Spring Tool Suite and I've installed it, I think you should install it too. It's a great way to get started and get writing your first Spring Boot 3 application quickly. When you do open up this program, you'll notice that if there's no other project started, there's a little link for you to create a new Spring Starter project. Click on that and take a look at all the different options that become available for you. Well, I mean, you can see that you have to give the app a name. That's kind of expected. But you do have a number of decisions to make. Notice that you have to decide what language you want to use. I'm going to use Java because I love Java, but you've got Kotlin and Groovy there. Notice that you can choose which type of build tool you want, Maven or Gradle. The version of Java that you want to use, I'm just going to leave it at 17. And you can even specify whether you want a jar file or a war file. Josh Long always says, make jar not war, and I can't disagree with them. Notice you've also got the artifact name and the version. When you build your application and package it a little bit later, the, that name gets used for the jar file that gets created. So this will end up creating a jar file called spring-app-1.0.jar. That's how those get used. Um, and then the rest of the stuff, group, package, description, that's just basic stuff that I think that Gradle or Maven would use. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to click the next button here and it's going to ask me what dependencies I want to include in my project. Now, you'll notice that I mean, there's a plethora of things that you can use. There's SQL stuff, there's IO stuff, IO everybody stuff. There's a bunch of developer tools. I'm not going to select it now, but I just want to say, you know, always include Spring Boot dev tools when you're doing software development. I just want to create a, a simple RESTful web application. So I'm just going to select Spring Web. That's it. I'm not going to do anything else funky right now because I'm just going to keep it simple. And when you're done that, you can click Next. You can even click Finish. There's not much on the next screen. Now, by the way, it does ask you which version of Spring Boot you want to use. I'm using 3.1.2. But feel free to select even an earlier version if you want. Now I'm going to click Finish. That's going to start off building my Spring Boot application. If it's your first time creating a Spring Boot application, Gradle may take a few minutes to run. So be patient and keep your eye on the green status bar in the bottom right hand corner of Eclipse. Okay, and with Gradle looking like it's finished its work, I'm going to open up this Spring Boot application. There's not a whole lot to see here. You can see you've got the standard Gradle settings and Gradle build file. If you want to open up the Gradle build file, you'll notice that there is that reference to the Spring Boot starter web in there. Also, if I come up to main resources, that's where you would put application properties. I don't think there's anything specified in there quite yet. And under source main Java, that's where your Java code goes. And right here, you can see there is my Java code. Now, I'm going to actually just do a quick change here because I want that code to be a little bit more legible for you. So give me just one second to increase the font in my Java editor. And I think you'll enjoy this a lot more if you can actually see the code. There we go. Now, what do we need to do here? Well, we need to just take a look at the structure of this. You'll notice that this class Spring App Application is annotated with this Spring Boot Application annotation. That's the heart of your Spring Boot App. If you don't have this class with that annotation on it, you don't have a Spring Boot Application. So you have to have some class somewhere in your project that has the at Spring Boot Application annotation on it and 
That file also has to have a piece of code that looks like this. Spring application.run and then the actual name of the class passed in. Now don't worry too much about that. That's boilerplate code. We don't have a lot of boilerplate code in Spring Boot. That's why we love it. But there's a little bit there. So that's got to be part of every Spring Boot application. Um, but from there, it's just a matter of writing code. We could write our own class. If you wanted to be lazy and just kind of get started right away, you could actually add on to this class. I'm going to add an annotation here. I'm going to add at rest controller. And what that does is that says, hey, Spring, I want this particular class to not only act as that Spring Boot application source file, heart of the application, I want to act as a REST controller as well. Handle REST-based request response cycles. Now, REST controller is in a different package, so you have to kind of go organize imports and let that import get added for REST controller in order for your code to compile. I click Control S to save that, and my error goes away. But we not only want this to be a REST controller, but we want to have methods that, that you know, we can invoke over the HTTP protocol in a browser is an easier way to say that. So what you do is you, you decorate methods that you write with things like get mapping. I want uh, someone to be able to get this resource, get this file, get this information by using a browser. And I want someone to be able to type in slash localhost 8080 slash hello in order to get the content that's in this method I'm about to create. And what's this method going to provide? What's it going to give someone if they call it? Well, it's just going to give them a string. So I'll say public string, say hello is going to be the name of the method. And then in this method, I might do a little system.out.println in the Spring Boot 3.x app. <laughs> Just write that out there. And then I'm going to return hello spring world. And there we go. We've got a very simple Spring Boot application. I need to organize my imports once again. So source, organize imports. There we go. We got the get mapping in there. There's the rest controller. I'm just going to take a look at the rest of the class there. You can see all of the curly braces lining up. And we've now finished off a very simple Spring Boot 3 RESTful web service that will respond to localhost 8080 slash hello and hopefully send back to a browser hello spring world so how do we run this all i have to do is right click on my spring app application and say run that as a java application i could run it as a spring boot app if i wanted to but i just want to show you how simple it is because it really is just a simple spring boot application a simple java application i click java application there I just wait a moment, the console will start up. I might even get a, a message in the console saying something about, hey, this is all starting up on port 8080, which it is. Look how fast that is. I think that's already started up. I'm going to head over to Chrome, type in localhost colon 8080 slash hello, and boom. Hello Spring World. That is our Spring Boot 3 RESTful web service working in a browser. I'll click a refresh a bunch of times and that will hammer that web service. Now there's a reason I'm actually hitting that a bunch of times because, well, if you can remember, we wrote that little message in our system.out.console line that said in the Spring Boot 3.x app. And every time I click refresh, that gets printed out. So that is the code that we wrote in the system.out.print. That's the logging being sent directly over there into that window. So there you go. That's pretty cool. Now, by the way, once you're done, you might want to click that beautiful red stop button just to stop that application. Um, otherwise, you'll get a port conflict the next time you try and run something on port 8080 and you don't want that to happen. But otherwise, that is your very first Spring Boot application, which handles a web-based response request response cycle on 
port 8080 of the local host and has a specific mapping for slash hello all up running and working now how easy was that now i promise you there's going to be other tutorials on how to do jdbc how to do io how to connect to kafka how to connect to amazon web services how to build docker containers and deploy to kubernetes we'll get there but you know what the hardest part is out of the way and the hardest part is just getting started with spring boot 3 and that's what this spring boot tutorial is all about now if you enjoyed that tutorial why don't you head over to the serverside.com we've got lots of great tutorials on spring spring boot software development docker jenkins github and scrum you name it if you're interested in my personal antics want to know where more tutorials get published uh, just follow me on twitter at cameron mcnz and if you're watching this on youtube why why don't you subscribe on the youtube